Uh, I'm Bart Kamart, I'm a professor in politics and communication at the London School of Economics and Political Science. Uh, and I know we've talked about this already, but again, just if you could describe uh, briefly your research and uh, especially, I think, how it ties into the conversations we were having yesterday and mm -hmm. today. Well, my, my, my research broadly deals with the relationship between uh, media and communication tools and social movements, protests, social change. Uh, and so I've been looking at how um, the media journalists represent protests, represent social movements, but also how these movements appropriate communication tools to communicate independently, but also to coordinate internally uh, and to also facilitate decision making, for example, or uh, coordinate direct uh, actions uh, through uh, media. And also I've been looking at how uh, ordinary citizens, uh, non-activist citizens, let's say, uh, uh, through the news or through the internet, uh, get to know about social movements and, and their program, their aims, uh, and, and, and how they support that or, or, or not. And thinking about the conversations we were having yesterday, how does that tie in with the, or what's the link there for you? Well, the link is obviously that, at least the social movements that I've been looking at, uh, are obviously also uh, contesting uh, within a democracy uh, the, the policies or, or, or uh, I mean, in, in my particular case, the politi policies of austerity and, and neoliberalism. Uh, and, and I think that if we look at, at, at the issues around democracy and, and, and the problems that we see with democracy and the lack of legitimacy uh, is also to some extent uh, has to do with uh, the broader hegemony of neoliberalism and people not feeling represented, not feeling that democracy is delivering for them, that, that d democracy is representing their particular interests. And, and, and so there is this kind of disjuncture between uh, the democratic system, the institutions, and what people expect from them, and 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 that it is not really delivering uh, for them in terms of, of of what what they feel that a democratic system should be f f there f therefore. What do you think that they're missing? Is it that the kinds of policies are not right, or is it the form of engagement, or? Well, as far as I, I mean, in terms of the research that I've done, in terms of focus groups with ordinary citizens or with young people, uh, I feel that, I mean, they kind of feel that the current offer is, is or the political offer is, is not really speaking to them. Uh, and, 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 and so there is a disconnection. Uh, there is this kind of sense that politicians are not really them. Uh, and, and also do not represent them. And, and so the challenge then obviously is how can we fix this? Uh, and and the, the, in, in many ways uh, there are a set of tools or ways of, of, of doing that, but the broader, deeper issue is that, that the political elites need to kind of uh, start understanding these tensions and, 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 and the way in which uh, citizens or especially the younger generation is, 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 is feeling disenfranchised. And that also shows itself in terms of why young people feel that if they are becoming political or want to become politically active, that they are turning towards movements uh, rather than political parties. And some political parties have also understood this and, and, and develop kind of movement-like structures. Uh, like if you look at the Labour Party in the UK and, and an organisation such as Momentum, um, there's a lot of critique on that from the kind of uh, el elites, let's say, uh, in terms of how, how, how they, they do things, but they are managing to uh, bring in a lot of young people and a lot of enthusiasm within politics and, and creating a parallel structure uh, that is less rigid and, and, and less uh, party focused, uh, but is more a kind of activist uh, organization. Great. Um, you mentioned communication tools. Um, 
is there something about the new communication tools that makes these kinds of movements possible or more likely than they were before? Or? It's certainly that these, these tools, these communication tools, let's say the, the platforms that they use and that they develop, uh, which are often open source, uh, that they facilitate. Um, some would also argue that they are starting also to shape these kind of organizations so, so that the kind of communication infrastructure is starting to shape the, these organizations in terms of how they organize themselves, in terms of how they discuss and debate internally, in terms of how they uh, co connect people. Uh, so you, you don't have this kind of um, structured, uh, rigid, hierarchical kind of structures, but that you will more have kind of decentralized uh, nodes, let's say. Uh, and, and communication tools are, are, that are being developed now are very apt at making these connections, at, at, at uh, making sure that if at a local level there are other people that are interested in similar issues, that you can connect with these people. Uh, and through the platform, but then also switching from the online, let's say, to the offline and making these connections between online and offline. Uh, because it doesn't make sense to, to only see this as a kind of online uh, tool. I mean, the digital democracy ideas are not uh, a silver bullet. They are not a kind of, uh, they won't solve the problems of democracy in itself. They are tools but it, there also needs to be the substance. There also needs to be offline engagement and, 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 and people need to see that things are changing. And if we are looking at participation, it's a buzzword that we see here, here a lot. But if you look at what participation from a more theoretical perspective also means, it's also intrinsically linked to power. It's also intrinsically linked to being able to affect the outcomes of a decision-making process in which you participate. And if you give people the opportunity to participate, but not to have an impact on the decision-making and on, on, on the outcome of a decision-making process, you are also making people more frustrated. You create the exact opposite of what you intend with making people participate, because then it's basically tokenism. And, or some would say, fake participation or manipulative participation, giving people the impression that they can participate, but in essence, they can't. If we think of, on that point, if we think of slightly earlier movements like Occupy um, versus something like Momentum, do you think that there's an evolution there where maybe Occupy, there wasn't as much impact, um, but for something like Momentum, there is a feeling that, okay, now we have a direct link to mm -hmm. politics. Uh, well, the question of impact is a, is a complex one uh, and is, is one that I think we should see in the long term and not necessarily one year or two years after the Occupy movement. I think the Occupy movement has had an enormous impact. Uh, I think, I mean, if you think of the slogan, the 99 versus the 1%, typical populist slogan, but then a left-wing populist slogan, but that has permeated through society. You see the media using it, you see people using it, the 1%. Uh, so in at a kind of discursive level, I think the Occupy movement has had an enormous impact in terms of shifting the debate, in terms of also bringing critiques of neoliberalism into the mainstream uh, of, of, of politics. If you think of people like Jeremy Corbyn or uh, Sanders, uh, Elizabeth Warren in, in, in the US. Uh, so we see that this message is, is slowly uh, moving towards, let's say, the mainstream of, of, of left-wing politics. Uh, and, and, and we also see that, I mean, in my own research, that a lot of the people that were active in Occupy uh, or organizations like UK Uncut are now active within Momentum uh, and, and, and have kind of shifted from, let's say, a more uh, informal politics uh, to a more formal politics and a recognition that if you want to achieve between brackets real change that you have to do that in a democracy through the democratic institutions uh, and, and, and I think that is a good evolution and it's I think personally probably part of, of the solution to fix the crisis of democracy that we recapture 
those institutions uh, to 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 to, to uh, in a way defend the interests of the many against those of of the few. Great. Uh, in terms of, kind of if we follow that course, then is, is there a next step? I mean, what happens if someone like Corbyn or Sanders gets into power? Does something like momentum continue to have? I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> I'm a social scientist, but uh, so it's difficult to kind of predict these things. Uh, history tells us that once people, I mean, look at how Obama, he also created a kind of movement like structure. Uh, but once he got into power, that kind of uh, dissolved a little bit. Um, the reason why momentum is there is also because of the, the, the kind of, uh, let's say, new Labour wing of the Labour Party uh, was undermining Corbyn and he needed a vehicle that was in a way parallel to the party structures that were not supporting him. Uh, and so the question is now, once the party structures are more kind of in favour of, of the kind of politics that, that he uh, puts forward, Will this organization like Momentum, which has all this enthusiasm, uh, merge into the former Labour Party or will it stay as a kind of semi-independent structure that has a more activist component? Uh, and an activist component that can also be mobilized on, on, the, on, on the street uh, to do canvassing, to, to do campaigning and, 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 and to win elections. Um, but it's, it's difficult to predict uh, these things. Uh, it's even difficult to predict whether he will ever get in power. <laughs> uh, the same with Sanders, for that matter. Great. I think we should probably leave it there, just in terms of timing. Uh, but is there anything else that you uh, we haven't talked about that you think it's worth mentioning, or any other points? Um, maybe. Uh, what I would also like to, to kind of stress is that there's a lot of focus now on, on right-wing populism and, and, and the danger that that poses to, to democracy. And I think it's a real danger and it's, and, 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 and it's, it's highly problematic. But I think it is only a symptom. Uh, it's a symptom of deeper issues that we need to understand in order to uh, reclaim representative democracy and make it representative and democratize it in a way. Uh, uh, to to then see that as as as, as a kind of uh, cure against or or defense against authoritarianism against uh, right wing populism and fascism for that matter. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> Thanks so much.